Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paris and I make videos on all things candle making as well as the starting and managing of my small candle company, Lady Simone Candle Co. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I make my soy candles. So let's start with what you'll need. I'm gonna break this down into three categories. The first category is tools. So what you'll need first is a workspace. First and foremost, you need a place to make your candles. The second thing that you'll need is a double boiler system. So to achieve that, you'll need um, a pouring pot, some type of pouring pitcher and a kitchen pot such as something like this to create the double boiler system here. So you'll need the double, a double boiler type system. I know several, many people use um, a Presto pot. I'm not there yet. I plan on getting one hopefully soon, but until then a pouring pitcher is just fine and you can create the double boiler method works just fine. The next thing you'll need is a thermometer to make sure you're um, keeping up with your wax temperature. You'll need a, some type of stirring utensil. I just got this straight sided spatula that I had. You'll need some wick holders, some wick bars such as these. You'll need something to trim your wick such as a wick cutter like this, wick trimmer. Or you can use something like this, some wire cutters, works just as well. You'll need some type of Tupperware to hold and measure out your fragrance oil. Fragrance oil eats through anything like a paper cup or something like that. So I normally just opt out for some Tupperware just to be safe. You'll need a kitchen scale, some gloves, alcohol, some paper towels and a heat gun. If you do not have a heat gun, a hair dryer works just as fine. I definitely started with a hair dryer, but something like this to do any touch ups should you need to. The next category are the items that you'll need to actually make the candle. So you'll need a candle jar these are the type of jars that I use for my candle line once I launch um, the nine ounce straight sided jars I you'll need a lid so I got my black lid here you'll need a wick of course your fragrance oil today we're using black sea from candle science this is one of the fragrances offered in my line and you'll need your warning labels and your jar labels. The last category that um, is, is the optional category. So these are things that you absolutely don't need. These are just things that I use to kind of help with my organization when I'm making a lot of candles. So I have these um, little labels here Avery labels that I used actually for my son's daycare items and a permanent marker when I'm making multiple fragrances um, at a time and I'm waiting for them to cool I like to label the bottom of my jar when I'm working with multiple fragrances and I just write what fragrance it is so that way once it cools and I need to stick my actual jar label on it I know which fragrance that I'm working with Totally optional, but it just it's, it just works for me. It keeps me organized. And then a cooling rack. I like using a cooling rack to cool my candles. Um, it's a method that I've been using for a while. Um, it just helps with transporting. I do not have a big workspace, so having racks like these to transport multiple candles and to set them aside to cool really, really helps me. So now we'll get into actually making our candle. 
I forgot to mention in the last clip that you need wax. Duh. <laughs> you can't make a candle without candle wax, right? I use um, Candle Science Golden Brands 464 All Natural Soil Wax. That's the type of wax that I use to make my candles. This is the number one player, right? How did I forget that? Sorry about that. <laughs> so now we'll go ahead and start making our candles. So first you'll wanna go ahead and get your double boiler going. So I already have my pot filled with an inch to an inch and a half of water is what you'll need. And you'll go ahead and start bringing that to a boil. And while that's coming to a boil, we'll go ahead and get our um, wax and fragrance oil measured out. So I'm actually going to bring you guys well, no, I think it's fine. So I got my presto, my pouring pot here. I've just tiered my um, my kitchen scale to zero, and I'm going to start measuring out my wax. Now to fill my jars, I use grams as my point of measurement. So to fill my jars, I need 198 grams. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that measured out. I'm just waiting until it hits 198. <laughs> just a little bit more wax here. There we go. We're at 199. I think that's okay. <laughs> Now my fragrance oil to get to achieve 10% fragrance load, which is the percentage I like to use for um, for my candles to that weight of wax, it takes 18 grams of fragrance oil. So I'm taking my fragrance oil, I got my Tupperware and I'm going to tear my scale to zero and measure out 18 grams. All right. And then we can go ahead and set our scale aside. We are done with that. Now, my water is over here boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and sit my pouring pot into the boiling water so it can begin to melt with my thermometer. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that on so it can go ahead and start melting. And I'm gonna bring you over here just so you can kind of See what I have going on over here. So if you see, I got my thermometer in there. My water is boiling, as you can see. You can see the steam. And we will wait for that to melt. So in the meantime, while that is melting, I like to go ahead and prep my jars. I'm actually gonna bring you guys down here so I can walk you through how I prep my jars. Hello. Okay, so here's my candle jar. What I like to start off doing is cleaning out my candle jar with some alcohol. What this does is it helps eliminate any debris and dust that may have gotten onto your jars during processing and shipment. It goes through a lot to get to us guys, so I like to just kind of wipe inside and out. This also helps, what I've found, is um, helps your wicks adhere to the bottom of your jar a lot better. Not that it already doesn't, but Having a squeaky clean sanitized surface helps with that. So after we got that sanitized, we'll go ahead and grab our wick. I use CD12 wick 
for my size jar and for this wax. So we'll go ahead and get this out. And I think, actually, I think I failed to mention wick stickers. You need wick stickers. <laughs> Sorry about that. You'll need something to adhere your wick to the bottom of your jar. Wick stickers work fine. Um, I've also used a heat gun, which works is what works pretty good too. So we'll go ahead and take our wick sticker and we'll go ahead and adhere our pre-tabbed wick to our wick sticker. Peel the front cover off so it looks like this and we'll stick it at the bottom of our jar. Do your best to center it. I try to eyeball it as best I can. And then I just take something to help finish adhering the wick to the bottom. So I just take like the thermometer cover to take an ink pen or something just to kind of help get it stuck. And then after we do that, we'll want to take our wick bar and go ahead and get this centered and stable. Just want to clip that on there. So your jar should look like this. So I just checked my wax and it hit 185 degrees. So I went on and pulled it off to heat. We are fully melted and it is sitting over here cooling. I'm gonna turn it this way a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is add our fragrance oil. Again, to fill my size jars, I have, I use a nine ounce straight sided jar. The feel line is seven ounces. So to get it to seven ounces, the, the net weight is seven ounces. To get it to seven ounces, it takes 198 grams to the feel line. So because I like to use a 10% fragrance oil, the amount of grams needed for to reach that feel line in the total weight is 18 grams to my 198 grams of wax. So once I add my fragrance oil in there, then I will stir, I stir about 20 to 30 times each direction. Swipe off your spatula here. I always have paper towels ready to go. So once that is done, I stick my thermometer back in and I let that sit in there and I let it cool to 135 degrees, which is the recommended pouring temperature for this wax. Now that our wax have cooled to 135, it's time to pour. So go ahead and get that out of the way and get ready to pour. I'm bring you guys down here a little bit so you can see. That is to the feel line. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. And at this point, I kind of turn it so I can kind of get the wick bar. And I just kind of, it looks a little off in the camera, um, uh, but just kind of had to play with it and kind of get it centered. Ugh. There we go. Yep, 
that is center. It looks a little weird in the camera, but based on how it's kind of angled a little bit, I'll move you guys back up here. So that is how I make my soy candles. Now at this point, I'm cleaning up. So I get some more alcohol. And I go ahead and wipe out a pouring pot so that the little thin layer of wax that's kind of sitting in there doesn't harden. And get that all sanitized and cleaned out. I also clean out the Tupperware that was holding my fragrance oil as well. Make sure I wipe that down really, really good with alcohol as well. So at this point, you wanna let your candle cool for 24 hours. And I don't touch it for 24 hours. I let it sit, um, except with the exception of moving my rack um, to a cooling place um, where I cool my candles. I just let it sit and I don't bother it. And then once we come back in 24 hours, I will show you kind of how I put on my finishing touches and if should I see anything that I need to touch up on the top of my candle, I will with the heat gun. So I will see you guys in 24 hours. Hey everyone, so it's been 24 hours since the last clip. And so now I'm gonna take you through the process I take when finalizing and putting the finishing touches on my soy candle. So I'm actually gonna move you all down here so you can see what I'm doing. So our soy candle is complete. And if you can't really see, there's a slight unevenness right up here that I'm gonna show you how I touch up and fix. So we got my heat gun here. I'm gonna plug it up. So what I like to do is you want to, I normally use the first setting, which is just fine for candles. And what you want to do is you want to melt an even layer of wax. Melt it till it's edge to edge with melted wax. So we're going to do that now. So I just kind of move it around, as you can see, until I achieve that even layer of melted wax. And so once I see that is achieved, I'll go ahead and cut it off. Ensure my wick bar is still sturdy. And we're good. So again, this tends to happen with soy wax. Soy wax can be a bit tricky to work with from time to time. Um, however, a heat gun or a hair dryer will be your best friend. Um, every now and then you'll see a sinkhole or maybe just some unevenness like you saw with my candle. Um, and so just to fix that, again, you just heat an even melt pool of wax from edge to edge. I normally wait for about an hour to let that sit and settle. And then I proceed with finishing the soy candle. So I'll check back in with you all in about an hour. It has been an hour, it has cooled, it's settled, so we're going to go ahead and proceed with putting on the finishing touches of our soy candle. I'm going to bring you guys down here so you can see what I'm doing. So I like to go ahead and start off with removing the wick very gently. 
So we remove the wick bar. I got my pliers. I do tend to, I do use a wick trimmer from time to time, but I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I love my my wire cutters. It just gives me a quick, clean snip, and I'm done. So um, I like to go ahead and cut the wick here. I eyeball it at this point. Um, I used to actually be that perfectionist where I measured the height of the wick as best I could so I can get it to as accurate as one fourth height as I could. Um, but now I just kind of eyeball it. I've been doing it for quite a while. So you want to trim your wick to about one fourth height, which is the recommended height to trim your wick. Then I'm going to grab my lid. You want to go ahead and lid it up. If you have your warning labels, you can go ahead and add that at this point. This candle is actually about to be used for um, photo photography, so I'm not going to add my warning label just yet. I'm going to wait on that, but you would want to, at this point, add your warning label. And then you got your jar labels. So these are my jar labels. I'm going to go ahead and take one off here. And go ahead and put it on as even as I can. And there we have it. There is the finished product all set and ready to go that is it that is how you make a soy candle if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below as well as letting me know what you would like to see on my channel if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe thank you so so much for watching and until next time stay encouraged committed to loving you and be free in your authenticity something i tell myself every day bye guys